Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm doing more things with Dream Booth on Windows, and but it's all right, I'm installing Ubuntu. So crack open your administrator privileged PowerShell and type WSL install if you haven't already got Ubuntu installed on your Windows gaming console thing. Right, so here it is. This will download and install Ubuntu for you. All terribly simple. And then once it's downloaded, you just watch those little bars go up. Once it's downloaded, it will need a reboot. So let's just do a quick reboot. And of course, it being Microsoft Windows, I've got an error straight away. Now there's a couple of things that this could be because this is basically running virtualization. You may need to go into your BIOS and enable virtualization, or you might not have a particular Windows service started. It's not going to tell you what the actual error is. It's just going to give you this obscure code. So have a look at the obscure code on Google and it will probably tell you what to do. Now, in my case, I'm going to run both of these things. So again, we'll pop open an administrator PowerShell, type in that particular command to enable all the services, reboot again. And also when I reboot, I'm gonna check my BIOS. And this time, yes, it has worked. So I haven't got any errors. I did need to enable virtualization so we can carry on with this install. So WSL install Ubuntu. Now this will only take a few seconds this time. This will download and install Ubuntu for me. And then eventually give it a few seconds. Like I say, you will be asked for a username. So I'm going to pick uh, a very good username. Uh, you should pick one that means something to you. I'm going to pick something that's absolutely original and no one else has ever used before. Uh, let's use nerdy, shall we? Yes, let's use nerdy. Then of course, a super secret password that you don't use on any other systems. So there we go, that's it. WSL done, we now have Ubuntu on Microsoft Windows. We can start doing things properly rather than playing Reading Rabbit. So the first thing we need to do is grab a few updates, exactly like it says there. So that first one will take a few seconds. And then when we do the sudo apt upgrade, that will actually download and install all those updates that we have found. Now, as I'm using the magic of video editing, I will modify time slightly. Otherwise, you'll just be watching this download and install for some minutes. There we go. And magic, as if by magic, everything has now updated perfectly. So now we've got a fresh updated system with all our security patches. We can install things like Anaconda. For our virtual Python environments. Now, this is obviously a lot easier than on Microsoft Windows. You just go to the downloads, you copy the address, and you pop back in there. Now, I've also made a downloads directory and change directory into that as well. So once I've gone in there, I run wget, that will download that. So I paste that direct that uh, link in that I, that I copied just now. That will download Anaconda. Then I make Anaconda executable and just run it. Brilliant. So now I am installing Anaconda and there's a whole license agreement thing that I have to accept. Otherwise it won't, it won't do it. So I just press space to go all through these things and then do I want to install it? Yes, I do. Yes. Yes. Otherwise I wouldn't have downloaded and run the program. So again, this will take a few seconds. So we'll just use the power of video editing to modify time slightly again. And there now I have Anaconda downloaded and installed. This will automatically go into your base directory, but if you don't want it to do that, it does give you a command there so that you don't go into base each time. Okay, so now we've finally got Anaconda installed. We just need to install the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit for Ubuntu WSL, and here it is. Links, remember, down in the description. So operating system Linux, x86-64, WSL Ubuntu, version two, deb local, that is where I got all the commands from. You just have to copy paste these into your little Ubuntu window you've got there. There you go. So that's it. You, you just copy paste all these in, in order. I'm just doing the last two to show you because it, it, you just have to copy paste them. That's it. Okay. So now you've done all that. You've, you've installed that CUDA toolkit. It's done all those little downloads. It takes a few seconds. Uh, you will need to open up a new shell. I've already got one opened here, but if, you've, if you're just running it straight from scratch, uh, Anaconda won't quite yet be started, so that's why we're opening a new shell. And then you can sudo apt install build essential. That will get you 
that is needed for transformers later on. Right, so now you need to create your new Conda environment. Uh, the first time you install Conda, you will also need to update those defaults. It will remind you about updating your base. So there I am just updating the Conda base. Only have to run that every now and again. Then you'll run Conda create minus minus name, whatever you want to call it. I've called mine diffusers. Uh, and you can use Python 3.8 or Python 3.9. I wouldn't use Python 3.10 because there isn't an Xformers for it. So once you've created that, you can Conda activate diffusers. And there we are. OK, so the other thing I've done as well is I make another directory. So I make a directory called GitHub because that's where I like to download all my things to. I like to be a little bit organized. And then once I've made my GitHub directory, I change into it. So there I am cd github excellent so then i run git clone and that will download this version of diffusers then i cd into that diffusers directory brilliant stuff so there's a few little things you need to install you need to install that actual directory there that will install this special version of diffusers and then you can change directory into the examples dream booth one as you can see there it's installed diffusers 0.4.0 dev zero. That's a brand new shiny one. So this is where this is one here is. Yeah. So we've gone into uh, diffusers, examples, dream booth. This is all the stuff in here that we're going to be running and creating our own things. Now, the first thing you need to do is install PyTorch that will have GPU support. So you'll pop that in there. That will install PyTorch for you. Then you install those requirements. That's in the requirements.txt file. So there you can see requirements.txt, that's, that's that file there you're installing. You also install Triton as well. We're going to be using that with Xformers and pip install Ninja and bits and bytes. That, that gives you the 8-bit stuff. And then you'll also want to pip install Xformers. That takes about 20 minutes, so I won't quite run that now. Then you want to run accelerate config. See how copy and pasting simple this is, right? Yeah, so <laughs> we're, we're zero on there. Uh, what type of machine are you using? Not using a distributed one. Uh, do you want to check? No, that's fine. Deep speed? No, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to select BF16 there just because I've got a 3090, but feel free to select no or FP16. Doesn't really make that much difference at this point. So then you'll need to do your Hugging Face CLI login. I, of course, have already logged in, but when you log in, it'll, it'll pop up a big Hugging Face. Go to your Hugging Face website get your token or create your token if you haven't done yet already. And uh, also don't forget to uh, do the thing here, otherwise you'll get this, this error later on. So you need to go to Hugging Face there and make sure you've accepted the license. So for example, if I go over here now, I have of course already accept, accepted the license. So if there's a thing there that says you need to accept this license then click on accept license. Once you've done it once, that's it. It goes away. You've, you've accepted the license and everything is fine. So just make sure you've done that. Now, the next thing I do as well is I also make a directory for training and I make a directory for classes as well, just because of reasons. So there you go, make directory classes, make directory training, done both of those. And now you want to either copy some data in or it will make some data for you as well. Now, one handy tip is you can open Explorer from within your virtual Ubuntu here as well. And that will open up an Explorer that is connected to your little special virtual machine there. So that's how you can edit files using Notepad and things like that and copy files in and copy files out. So for example, in your training data, I've only got one training example in there, but you put your images in there your images of whatever you want, your face, your cat, your dog, your cat toy, doesn't matter, five to 20, something like that. That's all fine. Put your training images in there. Now you can put your class images in there. I've got a load of class images in there too, but uh, it will make class images for you automatically. Now you probably have to reboot at this point. Uh, if you don't want to reboot, you will have to pop that line in quickly. It won't make much difference if I do it now because I've already rebooted, but there you go. And that will stop it complaining about not being able to find CUDA. So next thing you need to do is create your little training program. MyTraining.sh is what I've called it. And that is this one over here. There's, a, there's a two different versions of it. So if we scroll down here. Now there's one 
uh, that has prior preservation loss and there's one that doesn't have prior preservation loss. Uh, if you use the one without prior preservation loss, this one here, then that will use a little bit less VRAM. If you happen to have more VRAM, then you can do it with prior preservation loss. And down here, it says training on a 16 gig GPU, but this actually uses under 11 gig. So uh, if we have a look at the top here, it says uh, down to 9.92. So if you've got a 3060 with 12 gig of VRAM, this will work perfectly. Okay, so this does it by using the 8-bit Atom and also the gradient accumulate with gradient checkpointing. So those two there will make it a lot lower in VRAM. So that's what I've done here. So I've, I've actually called this one no pres. I do have another one here as well, my training. So if we just uh, if we can drag this one in here as well, let's have a look at that. So there's my training. So that does have prior preservation loss in there as well. So that will use more VRAM. So I'm just going to use the no pres version on this one, which is the one from here. So I've got no preservation loss, but I've also copied the bits in from down here as well. So I've got the gradient accumulate and the 8 bit Adam. So that's the lowest possible VRAM. So no preservation with gradient checkpointing and 8 bit Adam. That will get you your lowest possible VRAM usage. OK, so once you've got that file in there, yeah, so I've got it no pres.exe there. You'll need to make it executable. Yeah, so you can just copy paste that in. So remember to change that to whatever you change it to. So I've got my training or no pres, whatever you called your file, you're welcome to call it anything you like. And then, then you're ready. That's it. You're done. You can just run that now. So if I just run that, no pres. There we go. It'll start doing its thing. And uh, as you can see here, I've got the instance directory is training. So that's my training images, classes. It will make images. In, well, you're not actually using classes in this one, so it won't, it won't use it at all. Uh, and, and that's it. And there you go. So as mentioned, if you get that 403 error, do remember to click accept on there. And if you want to go back into this and start training another thing, then just Condor Activate Diffusers once you start Ubuntu, CD into your directory there, which is GitHub Diffusers Examples Dream Booth, and then you can just start running your training program again. So if we have a quick look at Task Manager in here, and we go over to the performance, we can see there that it's, it is using 12.9 gig at the moment, but that's because I'm running uh, three versions of OBS and a virtual camera on top of that as well. If I close all of those things down, <laughs> then it does drop to under 11 gig of VRAM. So that's what you should do as well. Make sure you've got all your other programs closed. Close everything down on your taskbar. Close all your browser windows. Close anything that uses any VRAM, and then you will get that well under 12 gig. So there you go. That's it. Dream Booth on Windows with things like the 3060 with 12 gig of VRAM and other cards that have 12 gig of VRAM. You can all run it locally now uh, without having to use Google Colab if you don't fancy that. Well, Let's, let's have some more links, shall we? There's some more links that you can click on here for things like that special virtual camera. Let's, let's take a look at those now, shall we?